Arkansas State Police officials say that a trooper has now retired after he crashed his vehicle into the wrong car during a pursuit. The incident happened on Saturday on Interstate 40 in Arkansas. At about 8.30 p.m., a trooper performed a pit maneuver, by mistake, near mile marker 265. He did it intentionally, but it was the wrong car. By the way, what's the law on that? Is it a constitutional violation if a police officer makes a mistake and accidentally injures an innocent third party during a pursuit? Authorities say that the trooper had been in pursuit of two vehicles, both traveling faster than 100 miles per hour. One of the vehicles being chased was a white four-door sedan. Unfortunately, the trooper in pursuit misidentified a bystander's vehicle as the suspect's car and executed the pit maneuver, crashing into the wrong car and bringing it to a halt. Dashcam footage of the pursuit shows the trooper's car traveling at high speed on I-40 in pursuit of the suspects. The trooper passes several cars before his vehicle approaches the white sedan, which flashes its brake lights as the trooper draws near. But as the white sedan slows down, the trooper rams his vehicle into the rear left side of the sedan, sending it flying into the shoulder of the highway. Both the driver and a passenger in the stopped vehicle were uninjured and declined medical treatment, authorities said. State police officials said that the trooper's supervisor immediately began an internal review of the incident, which is ongoing. The trooper involved in the crash, Corporal Thomas Hubbard, has submitted his letter of retirement and has not been on duty since the incident. But this is not the first time. In 2021, an Arkansas woman sued a Arkansas state trooper who said, who she said negligently performed the pit maneuver that resulted in her car flipping over on the highway at 60 miles per hour in July 2020. At least 30 people have died and hundreds more have been injured since 2016 from pit maneuvers, according to the Washington Post. 18 of those deaths occurred after police attempted to stop a person for speeding or some other minor traffic violation. You may remember that the 2020 case involving the pregnant woman was covered by my friend Lackluster, and that ended up resulting in a federal lawsuit where she sued the Arkansas State Police and the officers involved. That resulted in a settlement that did require certain policy changes to the Arkansas State Police's um, pit maneuver policies. My understanding is that under their policy, if a trooper concludes reasonably and objectively that stopping a pursuit, stopping a chase, protects people, protects the public, they can still execute a pit maneuver. Data from the Arkansas State Police shows that an average of 482 pursuits a year from 2018 through 2021 occurred, with troopers using a pit maneuver to stop a chase an average of 108 times. That equals about two a week. In that time, three suspects died and 204 others were injured with 43 troopers and, get this, 38 completely innocent civilians also hurt. So there are very important policy reasons to sometimes not carry on these pursuits that can very easily harm completely innocent people. But what is the law, as far as the federal constitutional law goes, of when you can sue? police departments or uh, agencies or police officers when they hurt somebody. Now, of course, if they end up hurting the person they're intending to hurt, the person that they're chasing, that is going to be a, your usual Fourth Amendment analysis using the Graham factors. So it's going to depend on the totality of the facts. You know, what is, what's the crime that the person is suspected of committing? And 
it's probably going to be pretty serious in pursuit situations because they're putting people's lives in danger. Um, are they actively evading arrest? Obviously, it's a pursuit. Are they placing anybody in immediate danger? Yes, they are. So there's usually going to be a, a pretty good justification for using uh, a large amount of force, i.e. a pit maneuver, on the person they're, in, they're intending to do it on. But what happens when an innocent person is, is injured or killed? Well, there is a what's called a due process claim, a substantive due process claim that is possible under the 14th Amendment for third parties who are accidentally hurt, but is a very, very difficult standard. So 14th Amendment due process, I mean, that's basically most of the, when you think of judicial activism in the Supreme Court or the, the federal judiciary basically coming up with rights that aren't specifically mentioned in the Constitution or elsewhere, things like abortion, things related to marriage, things like that. This is all 14th Amendment due process, you know, life, liberty, uh, pursuit of happiness, um, you know, type things. So this is sort of like the right to bodily integrity that, you know, we all were supposed to have up until around 20, you know, early 2020-ish or March or April 2020-ish when we didn't have any bodily integrity anymore. But anyways, um, the big U.S. Supreme Court case that, that governs this, like people hurt accidentally in police chases, is called County of Sacramento versus Lewis from 1998. Again, it sets a very, very high standard. The legal standard is often referred to as the shocks the conscience standard. In a nutshell, basically a plaintiff has to establish that the police officer who is pursuing the suspect basically intended to harm the suspect. Usually in these sorts of scenarios, there's going to be a greater um, chance of, of success using some sort of state law lawsuit. Um, like here in West Virginia, there would be a negligence claim under our state Governmental Tort Claims Act um, um, legislation that would probably provide coverage here, as it does in all of the regular car wreck situations that you have where police officers are involved in, which happens fairly frequently. So in a nutshell, if there's some sort of evidence that this was intentional and not just purely accidental and arguably reasonable um, for the police officer, then there's probably no liability under the federal uh, body of constitutional law. But perhaps there is, and there probably is actually, a state claim. Here, watching this video, it demonstrates that the police officer was an idiot, but it doesn't appear to show that he intentionally wrecked the the wrong person. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it.